We're about to go inside of the C-suite, kick down the doors of a young woman who is taking over the industry. You know her as Nomzamo Mbata. Let's go inside now. So thank you so much for having this conversation with us. Uh, one of the things I'm most thrilled about is how you've been able to sort of build this sort of like coming from KZN, yeah. being able to sort of position yourself to get some of the best sort of roles so quickly. <laughs> Are your friends jealous? No, they're not. They're quite supportive. Um, but I, I don't have a lot of friends. I, I keep it very tidy and I keep it very small, my circle. But you know, for me, I haven't even I haven't even scraped the top. I don't feel like I've done enough roles. I've only I've only done but a bit. There's so many souls and so many spirits and so many voices that are still inside me. Wow, wow. I know you've done a lot of travel recently. Too much. And <laughs> I saw you when you were in Cannes mm. and you seem to really sort of stand out. Did you have a moment there? Oh for sure. Oh my god, for sure. I, I stood on those steps and I turned around and I looked at the cameras and I looked at the lights and I looked at how everyone was just in the spirit and everyone was just in the moment and everyone was so excited. But even in that, there was stillness inside of me and I said, one day. And you knew you belonged. I knew that I belonged. I didn't feel out of place. I didn't feel out of place and that's how I could lay claim to it. Because I, I, I saw myself one day coming through with my cast members, you know, because they, they, once they clear the carpet, it, the, 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 the main cast um, kind of stands in the middle of the stairs and the cameras and the lights and everybody is just like clicking away. And there's a, there's a song that plays and everyone's like jamming together and everyone's high-fiving to each other because they're like, well done. So growing up in KZN, did you imagine yourself being on posters and lights and did you see yourself as an actress back then or when was it? When was the moment when you saw yourself in this yeah. space? Steve Jobs calls it connecting the dots looking back. I, as a child I'd look into the mirror and I guess it came from being an only child in the house because I was raised by my grandmother. So I'd look into the mirror, I'd speak to myself, I'd imagine little scenarios in my head, I'd start crying, get emotional and then pull myself back together again and say, oh wow, that was good, <laughs> you know? So it, 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 it then, it, it, then it, it kind of disappeared, I guess, because I was surrounded by that. I grew up on Mashu, there wasn't much, so any career that you had to choose had to make sense. You had to take care of your family. That's first and foremost. Once you qualify, you go, you know, whatever you qualify in, once you graduate, you find a good job and you take care of your family. And at that time, being an actress or being on television did not make sense because it's seen as something that has no money. Taking chances. Obviously now I can, I can have a different voice, you know, about that and I can, I can say um, something much more different because it, it's all about maximizing the opportunities. So that's where the love of the arts started. You know, I've, I've always wanted to be in a place where I can tell stories, in a place where I can remove myself and kind of be someone else and, and, and inspire and engage and move and challenge and, and create depth in somebody else's life. Or in, in that particular moment that they've removed themselves from their reality and kind of said, okay, I'm going to switch to Unomzamo and that, that's, that's my escape for now. So yeah, that's, that's, that's how it's been. Do you feel as though that that's a key ingredient of your success is remaining humble and staying grounded? I think staying grounded. Um, humility is another subject. You know, humility is so subjective and people have their own sort of uh, definition of what sure. humility is. Sure. I don't think it's, it recognizes itself. I do know that it lives in somebody, but I don't think it recognizes itself because it never, it can never see itself. It just can't. Let's talk about the business of what you do as sort of an actress, influencer, ambassador, presenter. Um, the team you have around you to help you sort of build your business. Mm. Now, sometimes people go at it alone because they prefer to do the deals. Was there, take us back to the first person you brought on your team. What were you looking for? The first person that I brought onto my team was Munyin Lee. 
she um, asked one of my producers about me when she saw me on television, and this was on Isibaya, and it was my first year um, being on any TV show and being in the public eye. And she asked them, she said, who's your Juliet? I'd love to meet with her. Yeah. And I remember the first time that I met with her, of course I was intimidated because it's Minyin Lee. She has the biggest acting agency on the continent. She's got one of the finest, or oh, oh, some of the finest actors, you know, under her, her, her books. And when I met with her, I said, I know you've got an ocean, but I want to be part of the jacuzzi. Mm. Because if you've got an ocean, <laughs> it's a lot of people. But I do know that they are the chosen few who are part of the jacuzzi. And if you don't feel that I'm worthy, if you do not believe in my journey, if you don't believe in this little girl right here, then I urge you, do not sign me. Let me go. And after that, after that conversation, she, she called me up, she said, I want to work with you. Because mm. that's the type of depth that I'm looking for. And she was the first person, she's still there, was still working really hard. I've, I've, I've met some of the greatest producers, some of the greatest directors in the world. I have gotten to, to audition for movies like Peter Pan. Oh, wow. Yeah, and um, it was down to me and Rooney, who acted as the girl with the dragon tattoo, if people yeah. remember her. I auditioned for Roots. I was supposed to be in Roots. I guess I was. I was in costumes. I did, I did a screen test with Philip Noyce. You know, so it, it's, it's those opportunities sure, and, and sure. she kind of also guided the, the relationship between Akin and I for me to get into the audition room and audition for Akin for my first film. So it's been such a fruitful relationship that when things started picking up, I knew that, okay, now we're not dealing with, because I've always, I've always um, shied away with the whole armor brand or whatever, because I don't, I don't know, I'm still, still iffy about that term. So for me, it's always been, you must treat yourself as a business. With a business, there's so many components that have to come together. There's so many components that have to work, to work towards this wheel that needs to kind of turn. So when things started picking up in the second year, I knew that I needed to get a publicist because I can't really handle things on my own. I needed to get some sort of managerial overlooker. And then I needed to get an assistant so that when I step on set, my mind is about the character and nothing else. Not worried about the next cover? No, because I've got people who have to worry about that. So it's, it's interesting to, 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 to be in that position and to, to, to be an employer, I guess. <laughs> 24, 25. Writing checks. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and you, and you get to understand that to make money, you have to spend money. And there's a lot of spending. There's a lot of spending. And I am so shrewd. I've got my accounting hat all the time. But I, I do realize that you have to take out the big bucks to earn them. And, you know, thinking about that side of it, the whole notion of literally spending money to, to travel, to get yeah. covers, to meet with certain people, do you, do you have like this thing where you go into business mode and then you shift to go back into creative mode? Are you able to make that, that fundamental critical shift or do you just kind of leave it up to other people? I definitely can. I, I fully believe in being hands-on with your business, being hands-on with your career. I never understood it when people say, oh, my lawyer ran away with all my money. You know, <laughs> I'm like, um, do you not get an alert yeah, like... when a single, single cent leaves your account? So I'm very hands-on and, and it, it was a conscious decision to be hands-on so that whenever one day I, I, I run a huge, you know, enterprise or whatever, I'm, I'm very well equipped.